This is happiness to be everything at once. Be unblinded, be unlearned, be unbridled and unburned. Hey everyone, welcome back to a brand new episode of Mood Prep. My name is Dave Nixon. Uh, today I am going back to uh, kind of old school. Uh, I'm going to pull apart a quote and uh, give you my thoughts on it. Um, and uh, actually, I just shared it on, on the old Instagram, hashtag Fitzbo. Um, and uh, I didn't hashtag Fitzbo. But uh, you get the point. So the the quote is by a guy called Carl Jung. Now, Carl Jung is spelled Carl, J-U-N-G, he, uh, Swiss psychologist. Uh, he was actually a student of Freud. So Sigmund Freud... Um, being probably the original depth psychologist that's really well known um, and he was both loved and hated at the same time so uh, his um, yeah, Jung was one of his students and they, they worked together a lot and then they kind of split um, over a couple of different ideas around the psyche so depth psychology is really basically in reference to um, the well in Jung's works the collective unconscious but um, the things that are happening in the unconscious, the things that are going on deeper, deeper, deeper than, uh, than we see for face value. So compared to things like behavioral psychologists where they uh, pay more attention to behavior or cognitive psychologists, it's all a little bit differently. And these guys are both, um, you know, thought as of genius, geniuses, but also uh, thought of as wacky by some people as well. Either way, so his quote, which I shared, which I do quite like, is... No tree can grow to heaven unless its roots reach down to hell. And uh, I'm sort of, I suppose I'll spend the next little bit pulling out apart, but I, the beautiful thing about these sorts of things and about something that I respect more about art now as I've gotten older is how we can look at something and make meaning of it. Now, we can try and understand what that person meant, and I think that's important, but the beauty of our human experience is that we can look at something or hear something or say something or read something and then be able to pull out our own meaning from it. And that's how every unique experience can actually occur and looking at Jung's words and knowing Jung's work around um, the shadow and uh, around this idea of um, what's it called like uh, the archety- archetypes so um, there's a book that I've referenced a few times by a guy called Robert Moore and Douglas Gillette and uh, it's called King Warrior Magician Lover The Four Archetypes of Mature Masculinity or the Mature Masculine um, which have both two shadow variations. And shadow variations are basically the darker parts of our personality that we reject. So the easy way to think about it is we're looking at the light, we're looking at the things that are nice and light and positive. It's all the darker things that are in our shadow um, that we often try to reject. And as long as we're looking at the light, we can't actually see the things in our shadow. We have to turn around and face them, right? So this is the idea is at slaying of the dragon, etc. You, you probably heard me reference it a lot. If not, there is plenty of podcasts in this uh, mood prep series that I have talked about it. And so, one of the things that's common in today's society, I didn't grow up in any other society, so I can't really mention that, but what I see quite apparent in our society is things like positive thinking, things about, you know, um, being around positive vibes and all this sort of stuff, right? It's this, it's this reach for, for some sort of heaven, heaven on earth. I mean, there's even a quote that goes, um, you know, what would happen if you um, died and then went to heaven and God asked, you know, you were at the pearly gates and God asked, how is heaven? It's like, that's, heaven's right here right now. The thing is, is that so is hell. But they're one and the same. Without heaven, we can't have hell and vice versa. And so it's the seeing of the integration of the light of us and the dark of us. But in today's climate, we're trying to, you know, see things in either a positive or a negative light. And I really think that this can become dangerous because we go, oh, these are negative feelings, sadness, anxiousness, um, you know, depression, nervousness, all this sort of stuff. It's like, sure, that they're uncomfortable, but they all serve a purpose, anger, aggression. It's like these are natural, normal human things. And when we're actually rejecting them or, see, or, or that identifying as them, uh, excuse the dumping of the barbells, um, then that's where it can become really quite dangerous because we're rejecting a part of us we're rejecting depth into our psyche and and the thing about that is that if we're wanting to reach these highs or these this positive place or whatever it's like we need to learn not to reject 
the things in our shadow, not to reject the sadness, not to reject the anxiousness, right? That can become naive more than anything, but learn how to integrate it. Learn how to integrate our aggression. Learn how to integrate our anger. Learn how to integrate our pain into the the person that we are today, right? Learn how to let go of the past that no longer serves on both sides of the coin and be okay with, with where we're at in, in this very fucking moment. And so... It's not, we don't get to heaven by rejecting the things that we don't like. We actually get there by accepting them, by seeing them for their uses and their resources or resourcefulness and their versatility. That's how we get there, right? Because then we're at peace, right? We're not at war. If we're constantly trying to fight away all the negative emotions, we're at war, it's when we accept them, we can become at peace. We don't see them as negative anymore. We see them as a part of the human experience that is necessary for us to exist. And in that space is beauty. In that space is true self, right? Because self isn't just the things that appear positive and fluffy and nice. The self is both yin and yang. We, we know this from a cliche standpoint, but it's, it's that's not good enough. What What we must do if we want to pursue that further is really start to identify the difficult things about us that we may not like or we try to steer away from and really look at them and and see them for their beauty and their use, right? Not when they have us, but understanding that we have them. And this is one of the biggest things. And I, I, when I constantly talk about the self, it's not the thoughts. That's that's not when someone goes, oh, I have these thoughts. It's like, no, no, you, thought, you, you observe the thoughts. You are not the thoughts. The thoughts that you have in your head constantly running, that is not the self, right? So I do this to myself. It's like, no, yourself is observing it. Your your ego is doing it. It's really interesting. And I'm not, I'm not saying that the ego is bad because that's the, it's, that's egoic. Going, oh, the ego is bad. It's like, that's fucking egoic, mate. Can you see that? It's just like, Observe the thoughts for what they are, but more importantly, and you hear me say it a lot, is observe the thoughts for what they're not. See, there's a lot of things going on. There's there's the awareness of the thoughts, right? And what you are, the self, is the awareness of the awareness of the thoughts. And that can only ever be silence. It's an observer. That is the self. That is true essence, not this egoic thought of positive thinking. It's the same fucking coin as, as the negative thinking, right? And so this is where we can actually sit back, observe, and then choose which thoughts we deem to be true, that we want to be true. We can hold on to them and learn how to really repeat them. And then that's how we can change the rules for our frames for our game. And that's how we change our life. By truly stepping back and seeing that we are observing the observing of the thoughts, and then that's where we have true power. But until we do that, until we really continue to practice and practice and practice and observe and observe and observe, it's not just a one thing, then we're always going to be had by our thoughts. And if that's the case, then we're never going to be truly able to move forward and, and build on to what's really important to us long term. And so as long as we're out there trying to give out positive vibes, it's like, don't worry about that. Don't worry about what you're attracting. Fuck that shit. Pay attention to what's true for you in this very moment and you'll you'll project exactly what needs to be projected. Team, on that, I'm out. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you found this podcast beneficial, it'll mean the world to me. If you would pass it on to someone else that you think would also find it beneficial, I apologize for the dumping of the barbells in the background. If you haven't already, jump on Facebook, search Moon Prep Online, join the group. Otherwise, team, that's it. I'm out. Until tomorrow, peace and pizza. Kick today in the dick. Slay the dragon. I'll see you soon. Be unblinded, be unlearned, be unbridled and unburned.